Hello listeners, this is the WBSM here, and today we're going to talk about what we think were the top five reasons the American colonists rebelled against the British. Now, I will give you reason number one, why the colonists rebelled. The Magna Carta Libertum was made in June 15th, 1215. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that the Magna Carta is too far from the war to have an effect, but I will prove you wrong. Just keep on listening, and you will understand. The Magna Carta was made when King John was the ruler of London. He was frequently known as the worst king in history. He sent his wife to jail. People who opposed him were starved to death, and he killed his own nephew. He had heavy taxes on barons, and if they didn't pay, he took their properties. Well, the barons weren't too happy about it, and they went to King John and told him he needed to obey the law. And when King John said no, they took control of London so that King John would be forced to negotiate with them. And after all the negotiation they did, the result was the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta had many rules in it, most concerned traditional rights and taxations of the king's subjects. But there were some laws in there that were repeated in many important places like the Constitution. The Magna Carta said that all free men have the right to justice and a fair trial by equals. Another law in the Magna Carta says, that everyone, even the leaders, must obey the law of the land. The final law in the Magna Carta stated was the right to habeas corpus, which says that when someone is arrested, they can say habeas corpus and be told why they were under arrest. The reason this is important is because people used to get arrested and die in jail without ever learning why they were arrested. Sometimes people didn't even do anything. This leads to the American Revolution because there's going to be one king who doesn't want to follow the Magna Carta. And King George had it made to get away with it. You know why? Because it's because people didn't think colonists were all at all related to them at all. So when they don't give them the rights, they should have seen it coming. I do say so myself. Now, Will, give us our next reason. Why did the colonists rebel? The Sons of Liberty. In 1765, Samuel Adams founded a secret group called the Sons of Liberty in Boston, Massachusetts. They tarred and feathered stamp act tax collectors and tried to convince colonial merchants not to buy British goods. Even though these actions may not have a big impact on the British economically, they had a symbolic impact. The sons were dedicated to rebelling against the government in which they had no no representation. Sam Adams summed up the Sons of Liberty's beliefs in this. Among the natural rights of the colonists are these. First, a right to life. Secondly, to liberty. And thirdly, to property. Together with the right to defend them in the best manner they can. That was interesting, Will. Keep it coming with reason number three. Why did the colonists rebel? The Boston Massacre. It became a rallying cry for rebellion against the unjust and biased colonial courts. It occurred on March 5, 1770 in Boston. The massacre started out as an argument between a British private and a few colonists. Then some kids started throwing snowballs at some British soldiers, which escalated to snowballs with rocks in them and then just rocks being thrown. The crowd had gathered and started yelling insults at the soldiers and throwing things at them. The soldiers fired into the crowd, killing three, mortally wounding two, and injuring six others. Thirteen people were arrested, including eight British soldiers, one officer, and four civilians. They were all charged with murder and put in jail. Six of the soldiers were found not guilty, and two were found guilty of manslaughter. The court ruling was unjust and biased towards the military. John Hancock said, Is the present system which the British administration have adopted for the government of the colonies a righteous government or is it tyranny? So, Spencer, why is another reason why the colonists rebelled? The Boston Tea Party. 
It occurred on December 16, 1773. It was one of the key events leading up to the American Revolution. There was tea involved, but nobody was drinking it. The Boston Tea Party was a protest by the American colonists against the British government because there were companies that were selling tea way too cheap, making other companies fall out of business. That's when people stopped buying tea from other companies. The Sons of Liberty staged a protest by boarding three ships, trade, by boarding three British trading ships in Boston Harbor, and throwing the ship's cargo of tea overboard. They threw about 350 chests of tea into the water. The colonists were disguised as Mohawk Indians, and the costumes fooled almost everyone. And the British knew who had destroyed the tea. It was successful, but there was some karma starting the American Revolution. Okay, Marcel, the fifth and final reason is... The Stamp Act, which was commissioned by Parliament in 1765, was a tax that was put on paper and printed products. The Stamp Act only cost about one cent, but this cent was being spent by almost everyone in the colonies. The colonists getting fed up paying this unnecessary tax because they had no way of getting rid of it. The colonists had no representation in Parliament. Marcel, why do people rebel? People rebel because they feel trapped, taken advantage of, or used. Then they become fed up with the things, with how things are happening, so they decide to try to make a change. They how how do how do they decide to do this? By rebelling, rising up against the power and control, sometimes for better or worse. Thank you, guys. All of those were great reasons to rebel. We hope you all learned something today, because that's all the time we have. Goodbye for now.